computer. You're recording. Hello, everybody. I am Sharon Land, post traumatic resilience coach, and I'm here with Reg McCutcheon, who I've known for several years and um, have always just really enjoyed our conversations. Reg is a licensed marriage and family therapist, EMDR therapist as well as someone who is just as passionate, if not more passionate than I am at post-traumatic resilience and growth. So we decided that we were going to just record one of our conversations. Um, we have such rich dialogue and we're really able to go there with our brainstorming and ideas and our experiences. So what better way than using some of the conversations that we have and prepare ourselves and help others maybe to prepare for this upcoming holiday season. So thank you so much for joining me in this and um, I welcome you. Well, great, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So was there anything that I left out? Anything? Well, I think you hit it, I think you hit it pretty good. That's good. Intro? Yeah, yeah. So Sharon's actually done, this is her first time and she's breaking a mold. So everybody gets to be uncomfortable. And I've got a face for radio, so bear with us on all of us. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we, we, we tried to decide what we were going to talk about. And a little bit of that was about resiliency in the holiday season. And, you know, Sharon and I had a conversation earlier today and about this on a drive I had. And part of that struggle is that you know we're just so aware of it in our business of what we deal with 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 our clients, and uh, you know, so we thought it was kind of important we talk about that a little bit right now. And you know, how do you get through the holiday season? So, and uh, so my first question I'm going to toss out to Sharon is, is you know, what have what have you found in recurring themes? You know, with with dealing with the the impacts of of the holiday season and resiliency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, the holidays really just magnify some of the things that individuals who have experienced uh, a time in their lives where they felt unsafe. And so it just brings everything to the forefront. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely noticing a pattern of more intensity of all of these feelings. Um, and the first thing that I would have to say um, is the sensitivity, kind of the hypervigilance of right. trying to create situations in the mind where they can be able to place, individuals can place themselves in situations where they're going to feel safe. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I've definitely been using a lot of, um, teaching a lot of tools and coping skills mm -hmm. um, to right. individuals, as well as really doing side by side guided meditation and visualizations, right. um, with my clients and it's really proving to be pretty helpful, but you know, how about you? What are you saying? Well, you know, you really hit on that. And I, you know, the thing we talked about earlier was probably some of the expectation management things yeah. and dealing with, you know, when you step into those guided meditations, how can, how can you manage some of the expectations we put on, especially in the season where, you know, things sometimes are measured by how big the package is or what people are wanting or how expensive it may be. Mm. Sometimes we don't always recognize the gift of just being able to be together. And helping people see that sometimes the expectations outweigh the reality and, you know, grounding that. So that's what I deal with frequently is some of those things that are going uncommunicated but need to be. And, you know, for somebody to step in and say, listen, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of funds this year, but I'm just happy to be with you guys. And I hope you guys will be just OK with that. What a vulnerable statement that's sometimes very difficult for people just to be honest with themselves about. Or they go out and they do something, put themselves in some kind of crazy debt or something to to meet somebody's expectation when maybe they really, you know, may not appreciate what you're trying to do for them. So expectation management is key. Yeah. And I completely agree with that because I think that that really goes into a pattern that um, we have a tendency to do when we get into this kind of negative loop, right? Where right. we always tend to um, feel like we aren't worthy enough just with what our presence, right? So. Right. Right. Feeling as though we have to dip into our reserves and into areas and places that we really don't have the resources, whether it's right. emotional resources, right. financial resources, um, even proximity issues. Right. So um, when, you know, I have a client where they were invited to go to see someone who is very, very far away and 
they're really processing all of the demands of how that's going to affect them and impact them on the timing, how they're going to travel, the fact that they have two jobs and they're working. And, you know, it's really taking a lot of mental energy. Hmm, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't have a lot to do, though, with how they establish their margins, though, in this time, too. Yeah. And, you know, what they're willing to sacrifice, what they're willing to give up of themselves and to be able to be part of the holiday events or whatever. And and I just always encourage people to be authentic. Find a way to be be true to yourself. Don't you know, you don't have to sac you don't have to stay up all night to make sure everything's done. You know, sometimes you only do so much and it's okay because that's the margin you have. So yeah. once you color outside the lines, you can't color back in. So that's <laughs> <terrible>. <laughs> Were you a creative color? Uh, no, Tara, I was terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I just also I always come back to you know with regard to what you're saying is like creating margins. How do you even create a margin when you're really so dysregulated, right? So when you're in that state of feeling unsafe, it's very challenging. It's a challenge to be able to make any kind of a decision. So you know I. Uh, I find that teaching someone the tools to be able to go inward and say, hmm, how am I feeling right now? Where am I feeling this? Oh, you know what? Right. I remember I used to feel this way when I was in that situation or these feelings are definitely not one where I'm feeling confident or where I'm feeling safe. So the first thing I have to do is find a way to be able to create that feeling of safety. Right. And then then making whatever decisions on. But, but wouldn't you agree in, the, in that stage that, you know, you, you really need to get ahead of that, that curve a little bit. You got to get upstream, you know, try and do this on Christmas Eve uh, is probably not going to work as well as you would, you would hope. So, you know, if these things are in front of you, then you have to get ahead of them. And part of that's just being bold enough to say, Hey, I've got a problem. And that's part of vulnerability. But on the other side, just being authentic with yourself, speaking your own truth, and uh, being okay, because it's really not about anybody else. It's about how you feel inside of you, about you. You just give other people a lot of power they, they may or may not deserve in it. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. And any ability to be able to do that comes from a place of inner wisdom. Yes. Vulnerability. Yep. Right? And the ability to be able to create this space in between the receiving of information and expectations and the actual doing. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and and part of that is, you know, you and I talked about this earlier, even earlier today, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in the doing that we lose track of our being. Yes. And, you know, sometimes just being there, just being present, being, being authentic are, are the foundations to everything else because then you'll find that, all the other doing things are so unimportant or so minor compared to your own stability, because once you can sit in that, you'll be okay. So, and, and, and that's kind of the ongoing struggle. And for a lot of people, especially, you know, when you're dealing with people that are, you know, already have issues with the holidays for various reasons, those that are alone, those that, you know, can't get together, those that, you know, far away, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they've got to start talking about them today. You know, yeah. if they don't start talking about them today, then Christmas Eve, it's going to be, you know, it, 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 it's going to be a, a, a real poop show. So how do you overcome that? And then, yeah, you like, that's the best word I had. So <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, uh, you know, what do you recommend? And, you know, how, how can people get help? How can people change if they need if they need somebody to help them? How do they do that? Well, I mean, isn't that the challenge, right? Especially, especially this type of um, situation where people have constantly been in this negative loop, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to this feeling of being dysregulated and feeling unsafe. And so it takes as long as it takes. Um, right. And um, I think that you know, the interesting thing is that with most people that I start to work with, and it doesn't matter what any arena, right? right. Um, the, the fact that most aren't really truly aware that they're in that kind of sympathetic, you know, autonomic nervous system, right. fight or flight response, right? right? And so they're making decisions based upon, 
you know, feeling driven by this um, obsessive thinking or, you know, or by the anxiety or, of the moment, absolutely. anxiety of the moment. Right. Right. So, um, so yeah. I think that your, your suggestion is really, really great because, you know, waiting until, and I think that we just kind of going a little one layer deeper, we as individuals have this tendency and we've been programmed this way right. that, um, we, we have this tendency to wait, to seek help by the external circumstances telling us that we need help and negatively. Right. right? right. So and that comes from a, probably a place of worthiness, um, not feeling like you're worthy of, you know, asking for help or, or seeking assistance to be able to rise even greater. It's usually always like, I feel more comfortable being able to ask for help when I have no other options. Right. Right. So to, to really start just being open to just having, having a discussion with somebody like yourself or like me, um, where we can just say, you know, I'm not really even sure, but what I do know is I just have this feeling inside that I'd like more. Absolutely. I think that, I, I think you're really, I think you're really nailed for Sharon because it, you know, people often get confused with asking for help in this time is, is about something being wrong. And maybe it's really just you being right. You're recognizing something and dealing with it because mm-hmm. that's right. It's not wrong. And to deal with either a mental health professional or a coach or, or somebody that you can just be honest with and, and, and speak the truth that's inside of you can be priceless. And, you know, having somebody just help you get through a moment, it doesn't mean what it, it doesn't commit you to a lifelong of, of anything it really commits you to understanding who you are and usually people like us are willing to sit there and say well let's just talk about see what it is and you know sometimes it's just a 10 minute conversation sometimes it's an hour or a couple days having a uh, over time having a couple just uh, having a discussion but you'll never regret it once you understand your own expectations you'll never un- you'll, ne- you'll never regret it when you when you understand what you're challenged with but that's what we do we help them see the things they don't understand because oftentimes they're a little myopic, you know, and we've all been there. We've, we've been so focused on what we don't understand that we forget what we do understand. And, and you and I both know in our business, we have to talk about what they do understand and get, help them understand what they don't understand because yeah. both inform each other. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I think that, you know, that, that wanting things to be perfect and the, you, you know, we do, we get very honed in on the minutia and the details of things that, like you said, could be very organic if you're just allowed to, if you can allow yourself to just kind of sit back a little bit, sure. and allow things to happen as they are and trust that you have the resilience and the strength and the resources and the support to be able to handle whatever might come your way. That's exactly right. What you know, have already know will help you get through what you don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So,